y'all it's Laura and welcome back to another scrapbooking process video now this time we're gonna do a traveler's notebook spread I've had a few requests for traveler's notebook so once a month I'm gonna pop up a traveler's notebook process video for you guys using the current freckled fawn kit now this one is actually from June it's the first one I've received as part of my design team package and so I was excited to dive in and decided to use the Traveler's Notebook sized papers. Now you can get these in six by eight, but I really like the idea of working with them in Traveler's Notebook size for my two page spreads and seeing how far I can stretch them and get them used up. So to get started, I've used part of this as the left side of the page accent, and then the small strip will be used on the right side of the page. So it brings the same colors across the entire spread, and I'm gonna use some washi to create a border along the edge of that striped paper. Now, obviously my washi tape is not as long as the traveler's notebook papers. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm gonna have my photo overlapping where that border will be, and that allows me to to get away with using a smaller piece of washi by just using part of it at the bottom, ripping it, and then moving the rest up to the top, as you'll see me do here. Just rip it right off, and that way the part that I'll be missing will be covered by my photo. This is a sneaky way to get a little extra out of your washi tapes. Now I'm going to repeat this same process on the other side of the page with the other piece of matching washi because you do get two of these washi pages in the each kit. And I really love that because if I want to repeat a pattern on the other side of the page, it's nice that I have two strips of that washi. Now personally, I really prefer these little washi pages to having giant rolls of washi because I can use them up more quickly and not be beholden to one particular pattern for a long period of time. I get a whole bunch of different patterns and can use them up fairly quickly and easily. Now using one of the pocket page cards that come in the kit, I went ahead and added that underneath of my photo for just a little bit of a layering piece there. And then these fantastic letters. I'm so excited about these wood veneer letters. I created multiple titles with these because I just thought they were so much fun. I'm a huge fan of wood veneer anyway, but give me wood veneer words or letters and I am a happy, happy girl. So I decided to use Sparkle Baby as my title because I am holding a sparkler. This photo is from 4th of July when we had gotten some very minor fireworks and some sparklers to share with the kids. Now we purposely don't set off the big loud ones, A, because we have dogs and small children, but B, because it's quite rude in our neighborhood to do so. Uh, that didn't stop our neighbors, but uh, we tried, guys. We tried. <laughs> so I have two photos, two smaller photos here of the actual little fireworks we did. So most of what we did was like little things like bottle rockets and like those little fountains that don't make a whole lot of noise, but they just kind of have a little bit of sparkle there for you to enjoy. And the twins and I watched out the front window while my husband and my youngest son were out there setting them off for us to see, which was really, really cool because once it gets dark, the mosquitoes come out and they tend to eat up us ladies pretty quickly. <laughs> so it was really fun for them to be able to watch. Plus it's even more quiet inside the house for the twins who are a little bit sensitive to the noise. So I wanted these title, this title of mine to stand out a little bit on the page and I felt like it was getting a bit lost just being its wood toned color. So I decided to take a black pen and just change it to black. And as you can see, bam, that stands out beautifully. And I decided, why just use one color of wood veneer when I can use two? So I'm using a white gel pen to color in the bottom half of my title. Now I will say that this did work, but it probably would have been more effective to do so with a whiteout pen or potentially a paint pen in white. Now, as you can see, I have a small visitor there at my desk. That is one of my twins, probably Sophia, because Olivia tends to lean into the camera area to get a closer look, whereas Sophia tends to just sort of 
pop in, see what I'm doing, and then pop out. <laughs> so here is my title all colored nicely. I think that adds a nice little bit of interest to the page. And now I'm going to repeat what I did on the left side here on the right. Again, putting down extra adhesive because I do not trust washi. I don't have great luck with it staying long term. And because this particular layout is actually a little bit bigger and will be outside of a page protector in my album, it's going to need a little extra adhesive to keep it in place. And again, my photos are going to cover up the gap that will be created in the center, so no worries there either. Now, if you were only doing this type of border on one side of the page, you could just use both pieces on that one side. But because I'm repeating this pattern from the left onto the right exactly, I needed to use both pieces individually on each page. I really like this striped washi though. It's a lot of fun and it's really versatile. Uh, designed to use and I found it just so easy. So here are my two photos of the fireworks. I am going to fill in that gap, don't worry, but first I wanted to get them kind of set up where I wanted to keep them. Now here are some other bits and pieces that were in the kit. Some more pocket page cards which are going to come in handy in just a moment and a whole thing of labels which I actually ended up using throughout the month. So now I have a fussy cutting job to do on this pocket page card. It had two little journaling spots that said watching and enjoying. So I went ahead and fussy cut those out and I'm going to tuck them in just next to the photos. So putting watching up at the top and then I'll fussy cut out this other one that says enjoying and put that on the bottom. And that way I could talk about how the girls and I were watching the fireworks from the front room and also that we were enjoying the sparklers uh, over in the backyard. So the sparklers, I'll be honest, made me a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> My twins are eight and they have autism and they don't always understand things that are dangerous. And so it, it was a little nerve wracking for me watching them handle sparklers, but they did very well. And so I was, I was quite proud of them for that. Now here is another little peek at something in the June kit and it has these lovely puffy circles with hearts and stars inside. So I'm going to use these as my scattering pieces on this layout, just like my larger layouts. I do add a lot of details to my traveler's notebook spreads just to make them more interesting and more finished. I've also fussy cut an entire page of florals because of course I did. <laughs> I do love a good floral. So these beautiful blue and white florals were in a traveler's notebook sized paper and I fussy cut them all out and I'm using them to accent the way these two photos and two journaling spots sit on the right side of the page. They're going to kind of fill in some of that awkward space and or trapped space that is in between other bits and pieces. So the trapped space in this layout was between the washi border and the bottom photo. And I wanted to make sure to add these florals in there to fill in that space so it wasn't quite so awkward. I'm also going to add a cluster over on the left side of the page so that it will coordinate with the right side. And I end up putting it at the bottom right. There we go. And then I'll add a, an additional little for word phrase next to that floral as well. I generally keep my traveler's notebook spreads pretty simple but detailed. So I don't tend to do big elaborate backgrounds like I often do on my layouts, but I focus instead on making the tiny little details really stand out on the page. So now I'm moving my title up to make sure that it ties in with this photo quite nicely. I do tend to keep my embellishing fairly close to the photos to make sure that they stay the focus on the page all of the time. I have also fussy cut out some hearts and stars from the washi tape. There was a beautiful piece of washi tape that had these tiny hearts and stars on it and I spread it out onto some white cardstock and fussy cut them out just to have a little bit more scattering pieces on this layout. Really, really love these and they came in handy. They were great for scattering on the layout and did a lovely job of just adding that extra little bit of nice cuteness to the layout. Now this was the alpha for June and it is a nice bright yellow. And so I went ahead and took the word bright <laughs> and added it onto some cardstock. And then I cut this out into a little banner piece to add next to the floral underneath of the photo on the left side. 
So really my title's going to read Bright Sparkle Baby. <laughs> I just thought it needed another little pop next to that larger photo to make sure that it is the main focus on the page and really helps to accent the whole point of enjoying 4th of July. I will add my journaling in off camera and you'll see that at the end. Now bring in some black Nouveau drops this time to help tie in my title with the rest of the page. I'm going to dot these around my florals especially, but also next to any scattering pieces that I've added on as well. So that's about it for this layout. I don't use splattering on my traveler's notebooks because the Heidi Swap Color Shine does stay sticky in the long term and I don't want my pages to stick together because these will not be inside of page protectors. So be sure to check out the Freckled Fawn kit. The July one should be out now. And that's it for me, guys. Until next time, bye, y'all.